The first thing about 5G is it's an opportunity for transformation. These technologies will form the world of the future. We cannot afford to be written out of that future. You have to keep in mind that more or less everything will change. We as an industry classify 5G as better speeds, lower latency, and the ability to connect to the very large number of devices that are suited for very high-end applications. Some of the applications that are likely to come from 5G, autonomous driving, developments in the healthcare area, smart cities, manufacturing, energy. The 4G technology is connecting people. The 5G technology will be connecting objects. When we talk about global connectivity, the relevant measure would be the number of connected devices. If there's roughly 20 billion connected devices today, it's projected globally there will be 50 billion connected devices by the year 2030 alone. In order to be able to handle all of this traffic, you require a network that is much more flexible, and that's what 5G will bring. It will be machines talking to machines, IoT or Internet of Things. In manufacturing, for example, you can monitor much better all of the machinery that is part of the manufacturing process as well as the logistics. You can start to predict and anticipate where the defects will happen. And as a result, you can improve the efficiency that can translate into billions of dollars of savings for the industry. Just imagine a new scenario where everything is connected. Do we need traffic lights? We don't need traffic lights. You just speak and say, I'm going home. The network knows where your home is. The network knows where all the cars and the traffic is. The result of that ends up being reduced energy consumption, reduced carbon footprint. For many years, environmental policy relied on educated guesses and hunches. There wasn't really a very strong evidence base. And so this is where I think technology can help us far outpace what we've been doing in the past. What 5G will open up is this instrumentation and transportation of data that could really take healthcare to a completely new level. Right now, if someone's having a heart attack, there's no way of sensing that. 5G and beyond will allow the early detection well before you even feel the symptoms. 5G is going to underpin the digital economy in many countries. And that's why it's really important that we get these enabling conditions right. But I think we have a behavioural issue that we need to address. We spend a lot of time engaged with our devices to the extent that we're looking at how do we actually make people look up when they cross the road. There's one thing about being a smart city. The other challenge is, do you use this technology well? Does it make us happier people? Do we use the city in a better way? We need to focus on not just the near-term economic benefit for the corporate world, but the societal benefit that 5G will bring. If you put a VR lab in a school, the students can explore the pyramids of Egypt or even the solar system. But on the continent, there are challenges with even basic internet access today. A lot of infrastructure in countries is built by governments in order to attract corporate investment. So governments need to decide what are the infrastructure elements they should be encouraging investment in. 5G gives us the potential to leapfrog into the next generation of connectivity. And I really hope policymakers, tech entrepreneurs, mobile operators, civil society activists pay real attention to making sure that this era of human history really becomes the generation where we close that gap between the rich and poor parts of the world.